one day they'll bring back this form. Just not today. Man, this was not in my bingo card at all. But look, the King of Elves has returned to reclaim his crown. That's right, we're talking Revice 37. Tamaki finally gets his weekend fit, which sports an 80s cool guy look. It's equipped with leather pants and a scarf headband. He's out here defending the public from their own demons. This is just everyday life for the people of the world now. The media reports that Akaishi is alive and well. The secret? He's been puffing on them Gifu cells. Weekend isn't going to take this spread of fake news sitting down and attempts to hijack the airwaves with their own messaging. So, wait, we, we had vaccine hesitancy last episode. And now we have the spread of narrative-driven news media? Y'all. Iki makes his way to weekend base with the nugget of info that he picked up from Akimitarian last episode. He's also got to get puffing on them Gifu cells. Now, it's important to note that Daiji has taken so many L's at this point that he's gone and pretty much given in to Akaishi at this point. Still doing pest control just to do it, he's pretty much the opposite of what Sakura and the rest of the gang are doing. Meanwhile, George is... <laughs> What the fuck is this name? <laughs> you know, I gotta do it. Play that jingle. Yeah, we get a glimpse of the next vice stamp that George is trying to make, which falls in line with what Akimitarian told Iki. It needs Gifu cells in order to make use of it, and thus, the plan to capture her using the icy cold powers of Barrett Rex comes into play. The tech inside the vice stamp requires the minds of not just George, but his daddy to make use of it. Didn't I predict this outcome like a few months back? After some daddy and son bonding time, Masumi reveals his charred face to George. It's ugly, isn't it? You look at it! And I totally called this in the Veil review last week. Iki and Sakura make their way to Akaishi, only to be greeted by the one they were looking for and the new Hell Giftarian. Speaking of which, the Hell Giftarian really gives Sakura the business. While all this is going on, our actual main characters, Hikaru and Hana, show up to flex on some Gifu Juniors. We get some over the top camera angles and gets climaxed off with the re debut of Barrett Rex. Because, you know, we gotta see all these forms minus Jack Revice at least one more time before the ultimate form is the new standard because we ain't going back from here. Daiji is made aware that Iki is going to take down Akemi. However, he's not gonna allow for this to happen. Akimitarian is given the Freezy Pop treatment all to Sakura, getting continuously wrecked by the Hell Giftarian. So much so that Iki's gotta jump in. Unbeknownst to them, Akashi decides to melt the ice cream all with the power of Gifu Beam. As Akemi starts getting dusted, Daiji finally shows up to catch the tail end of things. Enraged, he lashes out against Iki, not knowing the specific circumstances. He then has the longest windup to a punch that it allowed Commander L himself to catch the train from the countryside just to catch that fist. Okay, I know we've got some happy people out there. Hiromi fans, take this dub for once. Y'all were right. Y'all got your mans back. I don't care. Maybe with Hiromi back, we can finally close the book on this chapter of Daiji's character development. Or lack thereof. Though he did miss out on seeing Akemi, so in true common writer fashion, the hero arrives late. At this point, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Rating time! So this episode gets a solid B. It's not a generous B, it is indeed a solid B because we are finally getting the build-up to the ultimate form, which I'll share my opinions on next week. However, what we have here is really just putting up the dominoes in place for the actual final arc. I honestly didn't feel much when Akemi got dusted because when I was watching the episode and they were discussing the Gifu cells, I was like, your dad's right there. 
but it looks like we're going to have that next week. And I'm not looking forward to it if they actually plan on killing him off. Don't do it. Don't kill him off. Also, I'm really wondering if they have proper plans for Hikaru and Hana or not. Since this episode, they really are just there for pest control. I don't really feel like they're getting an actual real role in this show. And now they're also tossing in Hiromi. So I guess we'll see the returns of Demons Hiromi, which y'all can have that. But with the cast as large as it's getting, I'm wondering how the interactions will go from here, especially as the weekend base gets more and more cluttered. Anyway, next week is somewhat promising. Let's see if they manage to change the course of this show. So what are your thoughts on this episode's setup? It really is just a setup episode. Hiromi's return and Akemi's demise. Next week, we see the debut of Gifford, the big wreck stamp. So until next time, actually, no, real quick. Uh, tomorrow, I won't be posting up my Dom Brothers review because tomorrow actually is my birthday. So I'm planning to do a live stream sometime on Monday, so keep an eye out on that. So for real this time, until next time, bye.